Well, I write poetry, and I've been writing since I was like eight years old when I started like having heart issues. So like I've just been writing and writing and writing. And when I I started like sharing it, people said, uh, you know, like you should you should publish it, you should uh, mail it into magazines and all this. I was like, that's what everybody does. And This week, we're in New York City to meet Jacob Wheeler, an up-and-coming artist and poet whose powerful words and images truly come from the heart, though Jacob's heart didn't always want to cooperate. I don't remember really what it was like to have that just blissful ignorance, to that just absolute free feeling as like a child. I had it, and then thinking back, it went away, you know, eight years old, Everything changed. It was S it's SVT, it was supraventricular tachycardia. The first heart procedure I had when I was 12, um, it was supposed to be a three hour procedure. I was in there for like eight. You know, they were like, we got it, we cured you, you're good. Over in, you know, the next few years and throughout high school until I was 18, I ended up having three more um, that were all unsuccessful. And they, uh, the sixth one, <laughs> I've never cursed in front of my mom. And, um, <laughs> It took seven heart procedures in total before Jacob's condition was cured at the age of 28. But a normal childhood and promising athletic future were lost along the way, prompting him to turn towards poetry as a way to express himself. I started becoming good at explaining myself through words on paper, and I had no intention on doing anything other than just writing and throwing in notebooks. And then actually this girl, um, her name's Lisa Wilson, she found my poetry in the trunk of my car, and she had read some of my stuff. And, and she said, Jacob, I don't know what you're gonna do with this, but you need to do something with it. And I, was, and I had a dream that I was riding on somebody's back. They were just sitting in like a kitchen chair, and they were kind of bent over, and I was just writing my poetry on their back. So I woke up, and I was like, that's what I wanna do. I was gonna grab a Sharpie, maybe a Polaroid camera, and I'm just gonna ask my friends if I can write on them. While Jacob initially found it strange to identify as an artist and was reluctant to show his work, he found inspiration to take that leap from an unusual source, his little brother, Zach Wheeler, star pitcher for the New York Mets. I mean, it was really difficult for me to show my work. It sat in my house for like three years. And then, you know, and Zach would ask me, he's like, what are you gonna do with it, man? Like, you should do something with it. And I decided at that point that it doesn't matter what somebody thinks about something I'm doing, they're worried about what somebody else thinks about what they're doing. But, like, I, like, I don't care what people think about yeah. me. I don't care what people think about the performance I had, whether it's a no-hitter or a 15-hitter. I don't care. Like, right. I'm trying to go out there and do the best I can. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care what anybody says. Nobody knows how hard I train. Yeah. Nobody knows what I've been through to get to where I am. So, yeah, I mean, I just don't care what people think or say. And, you know, he's... I think it's starting to become the same way. Right. You know, I decided like just you just gotta jump in. It's never gonna be comfortable. Never, ever in life. It's never gonna be comfortable. That I just I just you know, you have to jump in and, and so that little two week period, two, three week period, it was in there. It was like to just do it. I sold my first piece uh, right before I came here to New York through my website. First piece I sold through my website, I mean that was a good feeling. Yeah. It was a really good feeling. I didn't know it was gonna feel that good. And my, you know, and Zach's decided for me. I told Zach, and I didn't tell my parents that. My mom said, "Did you sell a piece of art through your website?" I'm like, "Yeah, how do you know?" He goes, "Zach called all excited." I'm like, "Zach got excited? Zach doesn't get excited." And I was like, "Man, yeah, I guess it is pretty cool." So. With several gallery showings under his belt and more on the horizon, Jacob's path from a troubled heart to working artist now faces a new set of challenges. I don't talk a lot about it, but my my heart issues have been overtaken by mental issues and they tell me that it may have never developed if I didn't go through the uh, trials and tribulations of uh, medical issues as a child. Deciding to let people know is difficult because mental disorder isn't something you can see um, and so people have a hard time understanding and people that never dealt with it uh, you know, don't know how to handle it, they don't know what to think about it. You know, I have the opportunity soon to be able to show my art um, in Manhattan at a gallery or two. But it goes hand in hand with helping a nonprofit to where I'm gonna be able to speak with kids with cardiac issues. Being able to give back to those kids, or maybe speak to their family, their, their parents about how to speak to 
their children or how important it is to communicate those things or how to communicate with them. What I'm putting my head down and going forward and working hard for now is my mental health. And it's another one of those things. Do it for yourself. No, I'm doing it for the people that I care about because how can you truly appreciate love without heartbreak? How can you truly appreciate the good things in life if you haven't given in to some of the bad things and tried to understand them? You can experience the bad things and be like, oh, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. But if you don't look in there and try to understand the things you felt inside, how can you truly appreciate the beauty and the good things?